Welcome to Hash Time with Navguzi Chuanuka. This is a place where we help you unravel social constructs, discuss self-development in line with mental health, emotional well-being, and everything in between that directly or indirectly affects us in the millennial world around us. If you're hearing my voice for the first time and are the kind of person who is not scared of being a better version of yourself even if it requires you to contradict who you were 24 hours ago, consider this your virtual home. I'm your host, Navguzi Chuanuka, and I cannot wait to engage with you in the various conversations. Identity is one of the most common topics in transformational conversations. Anything, whether it is marriage, whether it is a job, or whatever creative direction you're taking, it is very important for you to be able to outline the things that identify you. Knowing yourself, the part of self-awareness, everything boils down to the issue of identity. And for today's HTNK Legal Monday, we are going to be tackling nothing further than identity. And I think we have also noticed that in a couple of episodes, there are guests that emphasize how our identity can affect us mentally but let's go into the legal aspects as well and this is in a way specifically targeting ugandans but i'm also certain it applies to other countries because our laws are very much a copy and paste system so some of the documents have had to draft so much from the time nssf <laughs> and like i say this is targeting ugandans i was going to find myself trying to explain what nssf is but let us keep in line i know if you're ugandan and you're listening in you know what nssf is so ever since nssf declared that there is a possibility of midterm access of funds there are so many documents i've had to file and also draft in regards to someone correcting the details that were initially submitted to nssf you know say the name and the year of birth some things were mistreated so they find themselves in the need to correct these details otherwise they cannot access their money when the national id system was introduced in about 2014 or 15 some people got cards that had details that weren't factual for them surprising as it is i often wondered why <laughs> my japa dollar border guy was called kayanja <laughs> it just didn't make sense and my friend and i used to laugh about it because this guy can barely pronounce lubaga <laughs> So it was just funny, like, how is he Kayanja? And we started having all these kinds of speculations that perhaps he grew up from the mother's side and probably just took up the mother's, you know, you know how traditions or cultures will might play along with the naming of the kids. But we're like, okay, if he grew up from the mother's side, that would mean an upper hand in the way how he pronounces the words in Luganda, but he was really struggling with the language. And so I decided to dig out the details when he had trouble proving his identity for a SIM card upgrade. And again, like I say, this is specifically for Ugandans. So whatever these telecom companies say, whether SIM, is it SIM upgrade or, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not very sure. So he failed to do that because he didn't have his id so his mobile money he couldn't access his mobile money and i had sent him money so that's when i was like you know what it's time for me to really find out why are you kayanja how are you kayanja why cannot why is it impossible for you to upgrade your identity hmm? this guy had assured us that that is his name and now this is when the truth starts rolling out so in the conversation i discovered that his name was registered by a cousin brother with whom they share a name. So both of them are Robert Okello. And I'm saying the name in full because I know so many Robert Okellos. I don't know. Oh my God, and then there's a Hubbard Okello. I don't know what the obsession is with the order of the name, but I'm saying it because I know it's not easy to just identify him. So his cousin shares a name with him, Robert Okello, and he is the one who registered the SIM card for him. But when he went to pick his national ID, the name came as Robert Kayanja. With his image, and I think date of birth, 
I don't remember very well. But it was his image, just that the name was different. And that's how he went on to register his SIM cards and whatever required a national ID. But I'm, I, I got to learn as well that in school, is not that something else? I'm not very sure. But I had to tell my border guy that your cousin does not have to just sit with his ID because whatever mistake is made by Nira, these are things that can be corrected. Because if you're looking at Robert Okello and Robert Kayanja, these are totally different people. Even when your image is there and on other documents, it can still be someone different. You may just look alike. <laughs> the identity is totally different. And so when your details on the national ID are not reflective of who you are, these are things that can be corrected. And Nira can always change the details recorded against you, NIN, as long as you have the duly registered documents to back up your request or application. And in other cases, it may not just be a correction of details, but rather a total change in name. For example, hmm, what's the best example? Like I say, it's still Uganda. <laughs> like, um, oh, let me see. Ah, oh, okay. Let me give a universal answer. Universal? What's universal? <laughs> Does universal <laughs> include all galaxies? <laughs> Let me give a worldwide answer because I'm now failing to pick a specific answer from here. But if we are looking at Jada Smith and Will Smith, Jada Pinkett has come to a place where she's also called Jada Smith, right? And then she comes to a place where she's like, my documentation going forward shall be Jada Pinkett Smith. And then you come to a place where you split and you want to drop the other person's name. That is also catered for. Consult your lawyer, check with the laws in your country and figure out how you can get that corrected. It's not a dual. I don't, we even have cases where someone just wakes up in the morning and they say, okay, I'm no longer Nabguzi Chiwanuka. I'm now going to be I'm going to be strong arm, strong arm, strong arm who, something totally, something entirely different. So check in with your lawyers and see how best you can be supported in the correction of your identity. It's very important and be careful how you would love to view yourself. You don't want you, I don't want you seated there struggling with, you know, you frown every time you look at your ID. You have to give explanations about how Nira made a mistake with your identity or even your, what is this thing called? The date of birth. That is also something that you have been correcting. See, these things can be worked on as long as you talk to a lawyer and let them guide you on how best you can achieve your identity correction. So where do we go from here? Use the listener letter link to ask for any clarity on legal matters and also join us this Wednesday for our very fast self-development stroke mental health episode in this new month. Happy new month. Happy March. Happy Women in History Month. Happy everything in regards to this month. Enjoy it and let me see you on Wednesday. Ciao. Okay, hold up. If you have not yet subscribed to hashtag Minabguzichwanaka, make sure that you hit the subscribe button in your podcast platform of choice, especially for those people in the Apple listening in via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Yes, <laughs> there is a YouTube that you can always also sub subscribe to so you can be alerted whenever a new episode comes out. Be sure that you subscribe wherever you're listening in from. I have had a couple of people talking about how they just follow the link whenever an episode is updated but no that's not how things should be done make sure that you're one of the first people that get updated about a new episode whenever something is published so go forward with that hit the subscribe button hit the follow button and let's make HTNK grow